we are in the car, which only means one of two things. One means that we're going somewhere vintage shopping, which is not the case. And two is that we're picking up a Facebook Marketplace find. And that's what we're doing. I'm with Justin. We're in his truck, which is so nice. As you know, we've been working on the laundry room makeover on the channel over the past like two weeks or so. And I've been looking for a laundry hutch, kind of something that I can use to store toilet paper, paper towels, extra towels, sheets, just random stuff like that for the laundry room since I have this little space for it. Um, I'll pop it up where it's gonna be going here. So I ended up coming across something yesterday on Facebook Marketplace and it was free of all prices, free. Like that's the best price you can get. Free 99. So we are heading to Tustin at the moment to pick up said free armoire. And it is in their driveway. Uh, the lady said that her husband put it out in their driveway this morning. So we're gonna go pick it up and I'm excited. I'll post a photo of what it looks like right here. Only had like two photos of it and that was all that we got. So hopefully it looks good. And I think we're gonna have to strip it, but I do like the style of it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Danish or a Swedish hutch of some sort. It could totally not even be remotely any of that. Solid pine. So hopefully we could strip it and make it just like give it a new life, you know? So we're heading there now to pick it up. Oh, we're turning onto the street. There's a sofa. Oh, it's been spray painted. Just kidding. Oh, ah! <laughs> that was bumpy. <laughs> It's over there. I see it. Turn left. I see it. It's behind. It's over there. Over where? Right there. Oh, that is not the address we had in. Is that it? Yeah. I mean, who else has an armoire sitting at the end of there? <laughs> but it's kind of cute. It kind of is. You guys, here it's kind of cute. It's so cute. Wait, it's like kind of cute. are on the side we thought for a second maybe it wasn't real wood but we're like 99% sure it is I mean you can't really carve into something that's not like this okay we just got to Lowe's and we're about to get some materials for flipping but look everything arrived safely we're looking for oven cleaner here we are heavy duty <laughs> I got every option possible, so I am going to let you know what works best. I just got home and we're about to start unloading the armoire and we're gonna bring it to the backyard and work on it back there because um, the neighbors are like pulling out their front lawn, so it's kind of hard to work up here. are going to start the process of stripping this. Now, the first step in the renovation of, or restoration, or whatever, we're like, I guess it's renovating, we're not really restoring it. Uh, we are gonna strip the original stain off the top and get it down to bare wood. And then I'm kind of thinking of maybe doing like some folk arty painting on it. I'm not sure, but I really like the carving details because I feel like they kind of give me an area to paint. Like I could do little green leaves or something. If anyone happens to know what this style of carving is or maybe where this could be from, I don't think it's a really old piece because they have like more modernized elements inside. And also it's like made for TV, I think. It's definitely hand carved at the same time. I wanna do a kind of test with the oven cleaner on this drawer front here, instead of stripping the whole thing and having it not be <laughs> accurate. I thought we can just try it here. It only takes about 15 minutes for it to actually work, so. this little scrape tool at the hardware store and I'm gonna throw on that glove I was wearing. Let's give this a good, generous scraping. I know that when you first scrape, it could kind of, with this, not look like much is happening because it still has to dry down. Well, I definitely feel like you can kind of see more, like more of the grade even. Oh, for sure. Like it looks more, look at that. This is a nice dish brush. Get the slug off there. <laughs> is it doing anything? Yeah, it's okay, yeah. Oh, yes. That worked well. Look, this has a little let's meet in the middle. <laughs> Ice 
destroyed the doors with the oven cleaner and then sadly somehow the footage of scraping these doors did not transfer and it is not on the camera. I do not know what happened, but these are what they look like. I just got downstairs and outside. We are going to check in on the drawer and cabinet doors that we worked on last night. So let's go see. Guys, look at these. They are looking so good. Oh my gosh, look at this finish on this. I really love what the wire brushing did. Now the camera kept dying yesterday when I was working on this and the sun was setting. So I want to give a little bit more of an input on like the wire brushing today when we do the base. So to start the stripping process, you are going to spray the oven cleaner pretty generously on the surface. Let it sit for about 20 minutes. Then you're going to use really any scraper tools you have around. We just got a couple of these plastic scraper tools and they worked great, but something that really worked well were dish brushes and like scrubbing brushes you would just use for general cleaning around the house. So not like a full on wire brush, but just like a scrub brush like what I'm using here. For more like deep cleaning, that really worked well. Also, we did have to do two coats of the oven cleaner so we sprayed it on scrubbed got a bunch of the gunk off then did another coat after and that really got it down to almost raw wood and i will say that when it's wet like this or when you still have your stripper kind of on the surface it looks a lot darker you really need to put this in the sun and let it sit now here's the wire brushing which that removed a bunch of the stain that really removed everything from the crevices from any of the little kind of deeper spots on the carving that removed everything I really like using the wire brush to almost give more of the scratch look, like right here. It kind of takes off more of the stain and scuffs it up a little bit. You just want to always make sure you're going in the direction of the grain. Not like that, like what I just did. Things so you can kind of tell. It looks rusty. Here I'm going in with a dish brush with just some soap and water to clean off any gunk and you can also use a rag to kind of remove any of the extra. The wire brush is nice because it kind of eats it up and then you can kind of tap it out on the concrete. Just doing a quick check-in. It's been probably four hours since I last checked in with you guys. We have been working on the exterior kind of casing of the armoire for the past four hours and it is taking a long time and especially with two of us so do keep in mind stripping furniture like this is not a quick easy process because I always think like oh oven cleaner it's gonna make it so much quicker still takes a long time so um yes but it is looking so so good it's looking very rustic kind of splotchy I like how the stain's indifferent there's some raw sections so it's coming out good so we just went through and gave it a bit of a sanding, mainly on these flat areas, as you can see. All the carving looks so good, like the finish on this edge too. Like, see how pretty that is? Looks so nice. So now we're going to spray it down with the hose and the water actually kind of opens the grain of the wood and makes the raw wood a little bit rougher. That's why you traditionally seal wood so it doesn't get like that, but we want that kind of look. So hopefully it'll make this look even a little bit more rustic. A warshin. I'm giving it a warshin. <laughs> Here's our hutch. It looks perfect. It like couldn't look better. Look how good it fits. So for this cabinet design, I wanted to start by sketching out on my iPad just some placements of where I could add paint. So I first went in with the color red because I was thinking I was going to use this color as a main color in this piece, but I actually opted against it in the end. So I painted it in some red and then I added this blue and white or kind of cream toned striped border at the top. I wanted to make the painting on this extremely simple because I am not an artist by any means, so I'm just following the original carving 
details and then just adding lines and simple additions that I know I'm capable of doing. I'm also going to go in and be sanding off some of the paint after the fact so I knew I could kind of mess up a little bit and sand it off if needed. So here I'm going in with just some plain acrylic paint from the craft store. Literally what you buy for a dollar at Michael's or Joann's. Nothing too expensive at all. I will share the colors in the description box below of the exact ones I used. For the top edge, I used the color called Parchment, and I just did like a striped border with the thickness of the brush. It was super simple and easy, and I did white first, went all the way down the entire length. This was actually extremely satisfying to do. So yesterday you saw we stripped this entire hutch of all of its stain. Well, there is still a little bit on here. Like some of the original orange is just slightly in there. And I really love that because I feel like it gives it this kind of this farmhousey element, which I do love when it comes to like a piece like this. Now, what I'm doing now is attempting to add a very folk arty touch to the piece with some paint. So I went into the top and did this kind of striped border here. I also added some green to the leaves on the wood carvings there. I did create a little iPad sketch as you saw and that's kind of what I'm referencing as I'm going uh, just for colors and kind of placements of things I do know I want to add some paint into these border areas here we still need to find hardware as well but I think this is going to be such a stunning piece when it's all done so let's get to painting because we have quite a bit more to add on here and then in the end I want to go back through and kind of sand off some of the paint so it feels more authentically aged and like an old painted hutch In between those white lines that we had added, originally I added in some navy, and I really love the way that this looked so much. So I just went all the way down, roughly added this in. You do not have to be perfect with it because in the end, once this dries down, again, I am going to go back with some sandpaper and just kind of buff the surface or rough it up a little bit so that some of the original wood grain shows through and it just feels a little bit more aged and authentic to an older era, if that makes sense. So going down, also on the bottom, this was a little challenging because it was on the floor, but it looks great in the end. I um, went in with the blue. The nice thing is, is when you do these stripes, if you mess up on the first color, you can kind of clean it up with the second. So went in with the blue color at the bottom here, did the stripes all the way up this border, then filled in the top section of those stripes. And then Justin went in and filled in all of the white, which made it look so pretty. And you can kind of see those dotted swirls there. I don't know how I didn't get any filming of that, but I didn't get any filming of dotting those swirls. I used the back of a paintbrush to dot just the top of the carving all the way around with a cream color as you could see on the right there and then on the front of these drawers I could not decide what I wanted to do for the longest time I thought the wood grain was so stunning so I don't know why I decided to cover all of it up with large checkers but in the end I loved how this looked so I added four large boxes and used the navy colored paint to fill in the boxes in between and the reason I did these large checkers was because once I get to the countertop in the laundry room you will see why I'm actually doing kind of a checkered pattern so I want this to kind of reference that a little bit and almost feel like they're connected but also stand alone kind of focal points on their own so I put the drawer back in this is the bottom one and then from there I was able to create the opposite pattern on the top drawer so I did the opposite of what is below I painted blue boxes where the green boxes were and then green boxes where the blue boxes were so it kind of looks inverted on the drawers which I think looks so great and as you can see here I so roughly added this in because I knew I was going to be sanding off a lot and then a little detail I wanted to add was a scalloped border and I did this kind of on the mid section of the cabinet and I used kind of a fluffy watercolor style brush to do this I just loaded it up with paint and then created the scallop shape first do not worry about painting the top section just worry about the edge because you can go back in and clean it up with the paint so as you could see here I did the edge then went back in and cleaned up that top area and just created the cutest little scalloped border there I went all the way down and opening the doors really helped with painting that I just finished up the last bit of paint on the hutch before we go in and sand it, but I want to share with you what this hutch looks like because it is just looking so good. Exactly what I've been picturing and wanting for this space. So let me flip it and then we are going to sand it down a little bit just to give it a more worn in feel. This, so here is what the piece looks like um, in its full painted look. I put a little diffuser over the window because it's shining in so bright at the moment, but it looks so beyond 
stunning. Like we did this little stripe here at the top as you could see, and then the green on the leaves and all this dotted detail around all the swirls, which go all the way down on every single swirl. I then painted this little scallop border here and did a checkerboard on these drawer fronts, which I'm excited to sand these to give a little bit more wood showing through. And the bottom has this stripe on it as well. I'm just so happy with how this looks. We used four little tubes of acrylic paint, a dollar each from the craft store to create this. And it was actually a really fun project. So let's get to sanding it and giving it more of that worn in look. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of sandpaper and just sand some of this paint off our surface. morning. This morning I could not stop thinking about how I wanted to sand a little bit more of the checkers off of the bottom. I sanded them, was editing the footage last night, and was like, those just need a little bit more of a sanding. So I sanded them a little bit more. Couldn't be happier with this cabinet, you guys. Like, it is truly exactly what I was looking for for this space. It's so cute, and I just can't wait to share it with you. So this is the reveal of our free Facebook Marketplace armoire flip. And that, guys, was how I turned this armoire into a folk art inspired hutch. And I love it so much. Also, I totally forgot we still need hardware for this. Um, I just figured, you know, we could find hardware in the final part of the laundry room. There's just gonna be one more video where we put everything together. I share with you guys the new washer and dryer. We do the stuff above there, a new light fixture up here. So that's gonna be coming to the channel shortly and I will make sure to find some hardware for this in the meantime. But until then, I'll catch you guys in at the next one. Bye.